Hello everyone and welcome back to another video that's been voted for by the Patreon members. So if you want to vote on your next content video, head over to patreon.com, become a silver member and you can vote on the next monthly poll. So in this video, we are been looking at the Chaos Cache Manager. So what is this? This is basically a way of recording a Chaos Collision destruction and reusing it in multiple places as many times as you like. It makes it really more efficient to add destructible environments to your scene without having to recalculate the whole chaos collision every single time. So let's talk about and show you how you do this. So one thing I recommend you do when you're starting out anything like chaos caching is to make a brand new level because what you're going to be doing is recording it at the 000 location, which is a lot easier and cleaner to do if you've got a brand new blank level. So that's what I've done here. I've created a brand new level. I've tried to landscape in so we've got a floor for things to be put on. But let's go ahead and put in our object we want to cache. So I'm going to go into the starter content. And in here, we'll find a prop. And there's the rock that you get with the starter content. And this is the object we're going to use for factoring up. So you want to make sure the object is at zero, zero, zero. Now, before we do anything with caching, we need to actually break it apart and have physics applied to it. So what we're going to do is go to our fracture mode. And first of all, we need to tell it to generate a geometry collection. So we're going to click on new and we'll choose a location for it. So we do SM rock geometry collection. And there we are. We now want to break it apart and we can do it with the fracture tools down here. Now there's different types of fracture tools. I'm not going to go through them in this video. But for now, what we're going to do is we can do a uniform. I'm going to fracture it a couple of times. Okay, one more. There we go, for good measure. And once we finish, we cancel. And you can see here how the rock's been broken down into pieces. And if you want to see it further, you can just go up top to the explode amount and you can sort of preview what it's going to look like. And it's all taken apart. So when we are doing this, we want to hide the bone colors. So with the details panel on the right hand side, search for the word bone and just turn off the bone colors. So now you can see the individual pieces. Okay. And you just want to make sure the texture they've applied to the inside where the cuts have happened are okay. And they are in this case, I think that's fine. Okay, we're done with this. We can now go back to selection mode like so. If I go to push play, you'll notice that the rock will bounce out the ground and then fall apart as it collides with the ground and surfaces around it. So I push it around, you can see it will just crumble away. Okay. Um, I don't want it to be popped out the ground. I want it to sort of stay there and be anchored to the ground there. So I'm going to put an anchor field in. And to do an anchor field, I'm going to go to our content draw down here. And I'm going to go to Blueprint Class, search all classes, and type in the word Anchor. And you'll see now you've got FS Anchor Field Generic. You want to pick that one. And we'll just call this one Field Anchor. And we're going to drag it out into our scene. And we're going to stitch that across like so to cover the width and depth of our object here. And we want to assign this to the object. So click on your rock. And at the top of its details panel, you'll see an option for initialization fields. You click on the plus button. And then on initialization fields, you can now pick the anchor field there. And what the anchor field is going to do is it's going to hold those pieces in place. So they won't move. And because they won't move, nothing else should move because it's tied to the floor. So if we hit play, see, nothing happens. OK, which is great. That's what we want. Now we need to blow it up. So for this, we're going to use a master field. So we're going to again go to our blueprint class and search all classes for master field. And you'll see there FS master field. And this is a tool, uh, chaos, we call it, that Epic have made, which makes blowing these things up really easy. We can just drag in our master field. That up here, like that. And if I were to simulate this, you can see it break it apart. 
So to give our master field here more power, we're going to go down to its field settings and you'll see in there apply linear and angular velocities. We're going to click on this and you'll see use torque has been ticked on and the torque multiplier is set to eight. You want to increase that number. So if I say set that to 30 and then simulate it, get a far bigger result there. Let's go back further and let's say 60. Yeah. And if we want to have a greater impact at the moment, it's just affecting like a, a small radius. We can change the radial magnitude as well to 1500, so it's double. And you see it have more of an impact on the settings going on here. About, it's a matter of just tweaking these as you like. So get something that you like the simulation of. So I'm going to change torque multiplier here to 100. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. And I think we'll keep it like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to record this. So to record this, you want to select the rock. Go up to the top where it says actor, go down to chaos, and choose create cache manager. And we'll name it, put it in here, exploding rock. And when you make that, in your details panel, uh, sorry, in your uh, outliner, you'll see in here a chaos cache manager zero. You want to click on this, and then in the details panel, you should see the cache mode is set to record. The cache collection has been set to the exploding rock, set to timed, and it's already uh, uh, put in the observed components for you as well. So the rock geometry collection has been already been added to it, and it's told to simulate. So what we do here, with that, with it, make sure it's set to record, is now simulate it. With that done, we hit the stop button. And now we've got a recorded cache. So I'm gonna change the cache mode here back to play. And now I can drag more of these out there. So if I drag in my exploding rock, you'll see we've got duplicates of our rock. And if I hit play, they'll all explode the same way because they've recorded the cache collection. So recorded cache is obviously a lot better for performance because it's not having to do complex chaos collision data calculations all the time. So if it makes sense for what you want to use it for, then use it. Um, it's not always applicable based upon what you want it to happen. But there you go. That is how you do the cache manager. So at the moment, these are set to timed, but you can also set them to trigger as well. So on start mode, we go down and we can change that to trigger for this one over here. So let me delete the other two. And let me stop this first. Yeah, yeah, you can delete this as well now. If you want. I tend to not delete it actually. Um, sorry, put it back. I tend not to delete it in this version of the level because it allows me to tweak and adjust the animation if I need to, the cache collection. So I tend to leave it as it is, but this is the one we want to look at. So what I'm going to do in here is trigger this. So at the moment, this is set to timed. I'm going to change it to triggered. So if I were to simulate it, nothing's going to happen to this one because you know, it's not set to trigger. And the trigger for this is when, let's say, after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to go to my level blueprint. And this could be like a uh, an overlap. It could be a hit event. It could be whatever you want to do as the trigger. But I'm beginning play. I'm going to do a simple delay. Delay it by five seconds. And then I need a reference to that manager. So this thing here, the exploding rock cache player. With it selected, let's go back to the level blueprint. Right click, create a reference to it. And then to trigger it, you just do trigger and you can do by component, cache, or all. Because you can have actually like multiple things combined together in a single player. So you can sort of break it down in pieces if you like, uh, bit by bit. But I'm going to trigger all of it and then plug that into there. So now when I push play, that's going to explode because that's the default one. But this is going to explode after five seconds. Yeah. So there you go. That is how you use the Chaos Cache Manager. It's a bit fiddly, 
but you eventually will get there. And as I said, it's best idea to always start it off in a brand new empty level as it avoids any weirdness and you can easily use it as a way of testing these things out before you put it into your actual game. If you like this content and want to vote for more content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donations help support the channel and allow us to put out content like this. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you've subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.